Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 15th of April 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so uh, now then, also just before we jump into the into the charts, a quick mentioning of our JD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JD Bank website and specifically our JD Research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on JDBank.com and click on the Research tab right there. So um, also. Uh, quick refresh of the figures here. Um, this is what we looked at yesterday. Um, so let's quickly have a and have a look at what's happening here. What happened overnight? Uh, most likely, of course, it has risen. The number has risen, but um, have we reached the two million number? We are very close. Well, to be honest, uh, with the same pace, probably we'll hit the two million. Uh, we could be hitting this today. So, well, let's keep an eye on this one. The total amount of deaths continues to rise as well. So, yep, not not that's not really um, let's say uh, satisfying here. I would say, but um, however, let's jump into the market and let's see markets and let's see what's happening here. So, basically, with the um, with the FTSE 100, I want to start with this one and uh, uh, this index yesterday moved back below this level, the one that I was talking about, back be below the uh, 5,815 zone. Um, in a way, all this is kind of looking uh, that it looks like that the index might uh, drift a little bit lower and could even uh, go go ahead and test this little short-term upside support line. So, you know, in other words, um, if the price continues to balance below this 5,815 territory, then yes, we will aim for this upside line, uh, which in a way uh, for now could be seen as a good potential area of support. Um, and if we see the, the, the index kind of uh, rebounding from this, then maybe we could see a nice rebound, a nice push back to the upside here, maybe even back above this 5,815 zone. So however, be very careful right now, guys, uh, be very cautious. Yes, we are seeing a bit of a decline. Currently, the, the, the price on the cash index is around the 5,775 zone. So not far from where it has closed yesterday. Um, so for for now, if if the um, if the index continues to balance below the 5,815 barrier, yes, this could lead to some uh, deeper extensions to the downside towards, uh, or should I say, deeper extensions to the downside in the short run. I mean, if that makes any sense, basically up until this upside line. For now, this is what we're going to be aiming for. If we get a break of this upside line and we, uh, well, this is where we should remain cautious and probably the bulls could be abandoning the field. However, again, for now, as long as it remains above this upside line, there is still a chance for the bulls to step in and drive this one to the upside. A uh, similar story with the German DAX. However, the German DAX uh, managed to um, stay above this, uh, managed to close above this 10,590 10, zone. Um, and looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is currently balancing near the uh, 10,700 and, well, actually 10,700, roughly around there. So, um, basically also not far from where it has closed uh, yesterday. Um, in a way, keep your eyes on the 10,590 10, and uh, if we continue to re we continue to trade above this barrier, then, uh, well, the bulls could step in and, and drive this one to the upside again. 
Um, however, if we see a drop below this level, below the 10,590, uh, then well, there there is a possibility for this one to drift a little bit lower uh, to try and maybe test this short-term upside support line uh, taken from the low of the. 19th of March and uh, well I mean then it will be quite interesting to see what it would do after I mean would it also rebound and push back to the upside or actually will it um, will it move further down for now guys like I said uh, the for probably for today the main focus is going to be around this level here around the 10,590 zone if we remain above it then yep there is a chance for this one to push higher and maybe test the that psychological 11,000 zone um, if it drops below the 10,590 then well we will aim for a bit of more downside um, up until we reach this upside support line so yep guys for now uh, for now be very careful be very cautious and uh, let's see how this is gonna play out but um, but let's uh, like I said let's wait and see here um, it's a very interesting spot uh, but like I said keep your eyes on this 10,590 zone gold so gold managed to spike higher yesterday and managed to reach an area let me just probably Put this one on the chart managed to reach an area near the uh, 17 uh, 1747 mark so basically didn't quite reach that uh, 1754 level that i was talking about um, that was basically the um, that was the highest point of November 2012. I've mentioned this one yesterday, and this morning we were seeing a bit of a correction here. Um, so this is quite normal. I mean, after having a, such a, a steep spike uh, in a day, then yep, a uh, bit of correction is possible. I mean, and and we already did that correction yesterday. Uh, let me just jump into a four-hour chart on this one. So. Uh, basically, yes. So, I mean, for now, um, in a way, this could drift a little bit more to the downside. Maybe it could test this uh, 1703, 1704 territory, roughly around here. Uh, also, it could test this upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March. And if it provides decent support, we could see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside. However, if uh, the upside line breaks, then, yep, uh, we could see a bit of uh, more declines. But, how, but uh, in order for us to get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels as I've mentioned previously uh, we would like to see a drop below the 1680 zone and then yep we could consider further declines again for now not much has changed guys uh, yes we are drifting higher uh, I mean well overall we are drifting higher um, however today we're seeing a bit of a correction here and this correction might drag uh, drag a bit uh, maybe for in, into tomorrow especially if the um, if the price kind of remains around here basically if it remains somewhat flat for today uh, we could see a bit of correction tomorrow and um, if this upside line holds this could be a nice opportunity for the bulls to step in Again and drive this one higher but again uh, for now be very careful guys uh, yep uh, let's see how this is gonna <clears throat> let's see how this is gonna play out now the main focus is of course in oil now um, so this is what I talked about in the beginning of this week um, uh, basically the um, the commodity managed to drift back to the um, to that uh, psychological 20 zone yesterday uh, the uh, the yesterday the and the the commodity managed to reach and test that psychological 20 mark um, which once again held the price from moving lower so all eyes are still in this one and this is what I was talking about because if we get a nice break in a daily close above uh, sorry below this 20 mark then yes we will aim for further declines for now we're just observing this one we're just watching it and uh, we want to see how this is gonna play out but um, but um, yeah, for now, like I said, be very careful, guys, with this one. Uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But uh, yeah, uh, keep your eyes on this one. It has a good chance of drifting further south if we see a nice daily close uh, below the that psychological 20 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, 
Ethereum. Now, this is the one that I was I kept mentioning that um, the only one from the top four uh, top four cryptos is uh, still kind of a, a trading above its short term upside support line, uh, taken from the low of the 13th of March. Uh, I'm looking at the Kraken exchange here, so um, the Kraken exchange pricing. So, yep, um, basically, in other words, it's stuck above this upside line, taken from the low of the 13th of March and also it's stuck below this downside line taken from the high of the 19th of February. Now all this kind of uh is still keeping us neutral because we need to see a breakthrough one of these lines either through the downside line or through the upside line before we could aim for a further directional move guys for now um, how you could play this one out is keep your eyes on this upside line and of course this 155 territory if we get a nice close a daily close below this then yep further declines are possible uh, AUD and ZD so this is this is something that I talked about yesterday and um, in my trader's tea time and, and we were getting close to this barrier the 1.0532 zone um and what i was saying that if if it stays below this if it stays below this barrier then we could see something like this happening where we could see a bit of correction to the downside however if we get a nice break above this and a daily close above this barrier then well i mean this increases the chances of a further drift higher so the only problem here is of course the fact that it's quite overstretched here to the upside Side. but um, of course don't get me wrong this this is not it doesn't mean that it should stop rising because I mean it might just be one-way traffic here for now it could just continue drifting higher so one of the levels that we're going to monitor is going to be around the 1.0606 mark which is the low of the uh, 14th of November and also uh, acted here as a good resistance between the 21st 22nd and 20 uh, 25th of November so We'll keep an eye on this one um, in a way because this could travel a little bit more to the upside. It could continue uh, wiping out all those uh, short sellers here. And uh, if it finds good resistance either near this barrier or near maybe at least near this one here, which uh, acted as previously, uh, previously acted as a good area of support. And now it could be seen as a good area of resistance with around the 1.0665. 566 mark um, now this is where it could become an interesting uh, point here for the uh, short sellers for the bears to step in and th then we could see this one uh, drifting back down here and uh, testing maybe this area here uh, which uh, now this this 1.0532 which now will be, be seen as a good area of support could be seen as a good area of support so yep guys uh, basically um, the the main thing focus here right now is of course um, if the pair continues to trade uh, above this 1.0532 mark now of course we will continue targeting the upside first we will aim for this level the 1.0606 but if that's not enough for the bulls at this time then uh, and the next target could be around the 1.0666 um, and then we could maybe consider a bit of a decline so but that's of course if we get a uh, if we continue seeing the pair balancing above the 1.0532 if by any chance today for example it drifts back down here now this is where we will aim for that uh, like uh, a bit of a correction to the downside towards this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March. So, yep, something to keep in mind, something to consider, guys. So, let's see. But again, for now, we're more bullish than bearish. Uh, and the next target for us is around the 1.0606. Uh, USDJPY. Um, so, this is where it's very interesting again because uh, yesterday, I, and well, actually, from the beginning of this week, I, I kept talking about this one and I was telling you guys to watch this barrier, so which we managed to reach. And the beginning beginning of this week I've talk, talked about this one and uh, we managed to reach this barrier the 106.92 and now the big question here is can it continue to provide decent support if it can we could see a bit of a rebound and uh, a push back to this downside line here uh, and uh, basically we could be forming somewhat of a nice descending triangle so according to all the tech t8 
uh, TA rules, um, these tend to break to the downside. However, we will not uh, rush into this yet, but even if, let's say, if it decides to rebound here and pushes back to this downside line, we're not going to start selling here because, again, uh, we have seen this happening in the opposite direction many times, where this downside line gets broken, where the upper side of the descending triangle gets broken and the pair starts moving uh, further north. So that's why we need to see a confirmation break or even a, 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 a ideally a daily close below the 106.92 zone in order to aim for deeper extensions to the downside. So that's why for now, given that we already managed to move nicely here to the to the downside yes whoever whoever captured this drop here uh, from the beginning of this week congratulations now the big question here is can this uh, continue drifting lower because it's, it is at a very interesting spot here so wait for that confirmation break guys and then we could attack uh, lower levels um, USD CAD. Now, uh, this one, uh, of course, is the one to watch today. We do have some data coming out, so uh, keep your eyes today, guys, on the core retail, retail sales uh, from the US, the core ones and the headline ones, of course. Uh, industrial production, something to monitor as well uh, from the US, and uh, of course, the another um, another um, news did data, another data set to keep an eye on is, of course, coming out from Canada from the Bank of Canada, uh, the interest rate decision. So uh, the current expectation is for the 0 0.25 to remain the same uh, because they did already had, have a, have huge cuts uh, made. So that's why uh, we will be very careful here for today. You can see that the, the pair is trying to make its way back up here. Um, it's, it's pushing back to this 1.3922 zone. Um, in a way, even if it travels a bit higher still, um, as long as it remains below this uh, below this downside line, then yep, we will uh, continue targeting the downside overall, of course. If this downside line breaks and we see a push up of the 1.4075 76 zone here then dip with this uh, this could lead to a change in the short term uh, trend for now uh, even though yes we are seeing a bit of a correction here to the upside the first uh, level to continue monitoring is the 1.3922 if it continues to provide decent resistance then we could see another round of selling however again don't forget that for today we have the data coming out so um, keep your eyes on that we do have the interest rate decision coming out first and, and from Canada and then we do have the press conference uh, after about uh, 45 minutes so uh, some movement could be seen then as well so if you haven't seen a lot of movement after the uh, interest rate decision then uh, yep uh, wait for the press con the BOC press press conference so uh, we could see some movement then so again again guys be very careful um, have your stop losses in place and uh, for now that's the scenario the one that I've mentioned uh, yes, for now, overall, yes, we're still leaning towards the downside, even if it travels a little bit higher, because this move higher could, it could be classed as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. Uh, but that's, of course, if this downside line continues to hold. If it breaks and the rate pushes above the 1.40, 75, 76 zone, then, yep, this could lead to a change in direction. And finally, Euro USD. So, uh, good run yesterday. Um, the pair managed to break the this barrier here, the one that I was talking about, and managed to most important managed to stay above this. And uh, this morning, you're seeing we're seeing a bit of a, a healthy correction. All eyes are on this level now. Uh, all eyes are on the 1.0952, 53 zone. Also, above, uh, on, uh, eyes are on the on the 200 EMA here on the four-hour chart. If all this territory provides decent support, this is the scenario that we're looking for. Uh, for a rebound and a push back to the upside towards the 1.1039 initially, and then 1.1147. 1 if this pair starts dropping back below this level here, below this territory, well, I mean back to the drawing board and uh, this could in a way lead to a bit of a decline here towards this upside support line so uh, something to consider guys something to keep an eye on and uh, let's see if this is going to play out but for now uh, we are still more 
bullish than bearish however we will keep a close eye on this area of support around the 200 EMA on the four hour chart and near this 1.0953 territory if it provides decent support we could see a nice rebound if it fails then well this could open the path towards this uh, short term upside support line taken from the low of the 22nd of March so guys I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening and thank you very much for all your likes and support um, so yep guys if you want to join me or if you I should say if you want to catch my uh, video later on uh, my traders uh, tea time around 13 15 GMT time um, yep we'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and we'll see how everything's kind of getting along so yep guys I hope you stay safe uh, both uh, health wise and market wise and uh, yep we'll resume later on today so have a nice trading day guys and I'll see you later bye bye